We're here at the Glen L. Martin Wind Tunnel at the University of Maryland. Our objective? Find the best way to get good audio in seriously high winds. Have you ever seen a reporter on the news reporting from a hurricane and marveled at how good it sounded despite the high winds? Meanwhile, you're having trouble with even the slightest gust of wind in your own recordings. We've done some research, and we've found a few techniques that are often used to fix this problem. Unfortunately, we don't have very much experience covering hurricanes, so we don't know which one's the best. That's why we're here today. Since 1949, the Glen L. Martin Wind Tunnel has been used in the development of weather stations, submarines, aircraft, satellites, sailboats, powerboats, fighter jets, and flight suits, just to name a few. On one side of the building is the test chamber. On the other side is an enormous turbine powered by a 2,000 horsepower motor. He's talking loud, talking loud, as though there's a lot of wind, talking loud. Today, we'll be using it to generate 70 mile per hour winds so that we can test six different microphone configurations. Talking loud, that reverb is really cool. Talking loud. Chris, our test subject, will be wearing or holding each of these mics at the same time. Okay, cool. So this guy, I'm guessing, especially because he'll have the most drag. Every microphone will be recorded individually. We're going to set the trim of each channel to about negative 12 dB, so that we have plenty of overhead for buffeting and the noise of the wind tunnel itself. The first mic is the most basic of all, a Shure SM58 with a $2 windscreen. Mic number two is a Sennheiser ME67 suspended inside a Rode blimp which is specifically designed for high wind situations. Okay. Mic number three is an Audio-Technica AT835B with a more modest foam windscreen. Number four is a Shure Lavalier on the outside of our test subject's shirt. Number five is the same mic, but pinned to the inside of the shirt. Finally, number six is a $20 ATR3350 Lavalier. We don't expect this one to do very well, but we've been surprised by cheap gear in the past. Check, yeah. test, one, two. Ready for check, one. check, test. For the first test, Chris faced the wind head on. Check, check, test. Wind speed picking up a little more. Two. Wind speed now 15 miles per hour. 15 miles per hour. Check, check, one, two. People are beginning to seek shelter as this wind is disrupting newspaper stands and causing cars to rock back and forth. Wind speed now 25 miles per hour. As the wind started to pick up, we discovered something unexpected. The more modest shotgun setup seemed to do the best, even beating out the blimp. Wind resistance on our instruments. Wind speed now approaching 50 miles an hour. That's 50 miles an hour. Coming in second was the SM58 handheld mic. Dramatic wind speeds, no one can be seen. The cheap lavalier did pretty well too, but we think it's because the blimp was acting as a windbreak. We're noticing that trash is beginning to blow around, including... The other two lavaliers did, well, not that great. Storm surge is now in excess of six feet. Wind speed is reached 60 miles an hour. Hang on. You have the right to remain silent? Yeah. <laughs> One of the things we learned in our research, and from personal experience, is that the way you position yourself when recording in high winds can affect your results dramatically. So for test number two, Chris was at a 90 degree angle to the wind. Ready? Yep, go for it. In short, all the mics sounded really bad in this test. For the final test, Chris faced away from the wind. The idea here is that by using yourself as a windbreak, you can prevent your microphones from bearing the brunt of the wind. This, unfortunately, wasn't very effective for the handheld mics. Because they faced the wind directly, they didn't do as well as when they were facing away. Although, once again, the AT835B with the foam windscreen was the best of the lot. Now it is completely deserted. Horizontal rain, heavy thunder and lightning, 60 mile an hour wind gusts, and rising. And there is 
As we predicted, the lavalier inside the shirt sounded pretty okay, if a bit distorted. Board up your windows. Go to the center of your home. It seems as though the double whammy of using your body as a windbreak and using your shirt as a windscreen gives you a decent result. Unfortunately, the cheap love didn't fare nearly as well in this test. We were hoping that this would be the underdog hero, but it simply was not to be. So what's it like in the wind tunnel? Pretty cool, man. It's refreshing. I like the air. It's, uh, it's a little hard to hold this guy. He picks up the wind really quick and wants to go flying. The biggest surprise overall in our experiment was that the blimp, which is specifically designed for this sort of situation, never provided the best result. This could have been something we were doing wrong. Ideally, we would have had two matching shotguns, one inside the blimp and one outside. So we don't know for sure whether the AT-835B handles wind better than the ME-67 or whether the blimp simply wasn't cut out for the task. But in either case, it certainly came as a surprise to us, so much so that we had to double check our setup multiple times to make sure we hadn't accidentally swapped the channels. So what should you do if you find yourself in the eye of the storm? You might get pretty good results with a handheld dynamic mic and a foam windscreen. Just be sure to keep it close to your mouth. If all you've got is a lavalier, hide it under your shirt and face away from the wind. Be warned, however, that you probably won't be able to get away with one that costs 20 bucks. And just as long as you don't mind looking a little silly, you could hold the shotgun mic up to your mouth. The thing you really want to avoid is a naked condenser mic, like the one on the Zoom H4n. This thing is super sensitive to wind. But a foam windscreen, or better yet, a dead cat, could work wonders. And thus concludes the great microphone wind tunnel test. We got more experiments on the horizon, so come check us out at fixingyourvideo.com. <laughs>